Shalom. Call Halal Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who taught me this truth and rule well. Salutations to the brothers out there that are laboring and pushing this truth in truth and in sincerity and in charity and risking their lives and their freedom to do so. To you I say Shalom. To the Akiam and to the Akwath, that'll be you brothers and sisters. Adawan Ratiza, that is to say, Lord willing. Hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be edified. This is your brother Amawan Ibad, back again with another lesson to the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, to feed the lambs of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, as commanded. And this lesson I'm going to be going into today, I'm going to call it, um, Be Ready Always for the Return of Our Lord. Okay? Be Ready Always for the Return of Our Lord. You know, the reason why you have to be ready always is because, you know, no man know the hour in which the Lord cometh, okay? The scripture tells you that the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, okay? So, that's, 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 that's basic scripture. You're supposed to know that. So, this is why you have to always, you got to be ready always, okay, for the return of our Lord, Okay? So I'm going to get um, going to some scripture and uh, Lord willing, you be edified. Okay, so I'm going to start off in the book of Acts, Acts the 14 chapter and um, the 22nd verse. And it says, it reads, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the most high. So we have to keep in mind that it's going to be by much tribulation that we're going to enter into the kingdom of the Most High, right? Let me read it again. Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the Most High. And this is the time that we're living in. Another, um, another uh, precept that comes to mind real quick, I'll grab it. Is um first Peter's the fourth chapter at the seven the eighteen verse is the point, but I'll read seventeen also. It says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high. And if it first begin at us, when it says the house of the most high, it's talking about those who know that they're that they, they are Israelites. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High. And this is the point, verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? So the righteous is going to scarcely be saved, showing you that it's going to be by way of tribulation. Okay? It's going to be by way of tribulation. So I'm going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 13. And read that. And it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So you have to endure unto the end. And this is another reason why you have to be always ready for the return of our Lord. You have to endure until the end. No man don't, don't know the hour. The Lord says he's so coming as a thief in the night. So you have to always be ready so you don't get caught off guard. Okay? Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay, so it's going to be by way of tribulation. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. So I'm going to jump down to verse 29. And it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun, of, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Okay? And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So now by this time, you have to been repented and, and, and get acquainted with the Lord and been pleasing to him and doing the work and the will of the Lord by this time, because this is, this is the appearing of the Lord. You can't be trying to get right or think that you're going to be spared if you haven't repented, you have to you have to be already repented and serving the Lord. 
Okay, before this point, because at this time, this is when the Lord is appearing. Okay, that's why you have to be always ready for the return of our Lord. Okay, that's that's what it is. You have to be always ready for the return of our Lord, man. Okay, and that's just what it is. Let me read verse 30 again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30 says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and, the, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Yeah, because when they see a, 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 a so-called, you know, black man, you know, <laughs> a, a crack in the skies, right? They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay, and I say so-called because we don't call ourselves black. You know, we're different shades of brown. Okay? If you want to say of dark complexion, it's fine, but not black. Because when you look up the meaning of black, it means void of light and everything derogatory. Okay? Um, going down to, um, and also this verse right here, when the Lord is coming, in, 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 in shall um, Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. It also tells you that in the book of Revelation, the first chapter, the seventh verse, you know, that, you know, they shall see the Son of Man, you know, coming in the clouds, you know, and all the tribes shall mourn. Why are they going to mourn? Because they can see the true revelation of our Lord. Okay? And all of these different, all of these different other heathen nations too, they know the things what they've done to the children of Israel. But reading on, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 31, it says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay? So, his, his elect, who is elect? Those that are doing the will. The work and the will of the Lord. Okay? Elect from among the tribes of Israel. Okay? The Israel of the Most High, Galatians 6 and 16. Okay? The Lord is going to send with the sound of a trumpet. The angels are going to gather together his elect from the four winds, from all over the earth. Okay? Now, you have to, um, you have to be ready always for, 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 even though this is a predestination, because the elect is predestinated from the foundation of the earth. But at the end of the day, you still have to give diligence to make your calling an election sure. And all will not get that scripture, um, um, before the lesson done. Okay, um. Reading down Matthew chapter 24 and verse 32, it says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Okay, yeah. Even at the doors, the return of our Lord is near. All of these different prophecies, you know, we in the time right now where Esau trying to put that O uh, through the people and, 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 and make them uh, perpetual slaves, man. All right, when you read um, Exodus chapter 21, it tells you about that O, you know. The Bible speaks about it in uh, Revelation, the 13th chapter also, at the 16th verse going down. And he calls it all both great and uh, small, free and uh, poor, rich and uh, free and born, rich and poor, roughly paraphrasing to receive a mark save that he cannot buy nor sell. All right, so you know what it is, man. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, and and, and and also you get the warning in, in Revelation chapter 14 and verse 9 going down. We'll tell you the consequences of, of getting that mark when you go to the word mark in the Greek, it's karagma, okay, which is an, an incision or engravement. Uh, we believe through the spirit it to be. The RFID uh, microchip. Okay, um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 33. So likewise, ye when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Right, the kingdom of heaven. The scripture tell you, um, Second Ezra, the sixth chapter, and the ninth verse. Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it, which follow it. So that's the Lord is coming um 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 to 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 take rulership over all of these nations and punish the wicked and, 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 and for what the things that they've done to the children of Israel. So we got next man. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it man. Okay. Verse thirty four. 
It says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be filled, fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Right? So, be always ready for the return of our Lord. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, it says, But the day and hour knoweth no man, okay? No man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Okay, so only the Most High knows, you know, when the Lord is going to return. Okay, so this is why you got to be always ready for the return of our Lord. Uh, verse 37, it says, But as the days of Noah, meaning Noah, were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Okay? Two women shall be grinding at the mill and the one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 42. Remember, the title of this lesson, be always ready for the return of our Lord. Verse 42, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 42, it says, Watch ye, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord do come. Okay, so this is how you got to watch and be ready always. Okay, verse 43, it says, But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch that what watch the thief would come he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up so you got to stay on your watch man the lord told us to watch okay verse 44 therefore be ye also ready be always ready for the return of our lord matthew chapter 24 and verse 44 therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh Okay, so you have to be on your watch, man. Verse 45. Who then, is, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is, the, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. And yes, you want, you want to be found in good grace with the Lord, man. So you have to be pleasing unto the Lord and doing his work and his will. Okay, giving diligence. Okay, once again, I'm going to get that scripture before we close out, Lord willing. Verse 47. Um, Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over, or, or, over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with, drunken, with the drunken, the Lord... Of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, okay, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's right. So that's why the scriptures say, be 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 careful uh, 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 with with the, with the cares of this world, so 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 that day doesn't come upon you unaware. So you can't you can't be all tangled up into this world. That that day come upon you and, and, and catch you unawares, man. You gotta be careful. You know? You gotta it's a balance to everything. So you have to make sure you, you put balance, man. You can't you can't be all entangled up in the world to the point where you can't do the work of the Lord, because that ain't gonna work. You know, the Lord the Lord deal with balance, man. The scripture tell you, um, Proverbs chapter eleven and verse one. a, a, a false balance is an abomination to the most high, but a just weight is his delight. Okay? So now once again, you must be always ready for the return of our Lord. I'm going to get another account in, in, in Matthew chapter 25. Let's go over to the next chapter. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. This bridegroom would be our shy. And, and, and five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil 
with them. So they ain't took no oil with them. That was a that was a that was an unwise move. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. So now everybody supposed to be ready to go and meet the bridegroom. Verse 7 says, Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Verse 8, And the foolish and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Verse 9 says, But the wise said, but the wise answered, saying, Not so, <laughs> not so, least there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Okay? Philippians 2 and 12, it tells you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you're working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, roughly paraphrasing, you're going to make sure you do the things that you're supposed to do. Give yourself the diligence and wisdom. Okay? How are you going to put oil in your lamps? You have to be ready. You have to be ready always for the return of our Lord. Okay, verse 10. It says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready... Yeah, go that word ready again. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Okay, the door was shut. That, that reminds me of when, when the Mosai shut the door of the ark. <laughs> when the flood came, the door was shut. So they were shut out. Okay, why? Because they, they, was, they, was, they, they was unwise. They didn't have oil. They didn't have the oil. Okay, verse 11 says, Afterward came also the other virgins, the foolish virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. And that's the point. So you have to watch, meaning you have to be always ready, man. You're watching. You're on your watch and you're always ready. Okay, so you have to watch, man. You can't play around. You got to be watching. All right. So what? What? What's a part of that watching? You got. You got. You got to. Let me. Let me. You. 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 You got to be always ready, man. You watching. You doing the work and the will of the Lord. You know what the perfect will of the Lord is. You're supposed to know what it is. Okay. Let me grab that scripture real quick in, in Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, the fifth chapter. And verse 17, it says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise. You see that, that, that word again? Be not unwise, man, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. See, you have to know what the will of the Lord is. To do his work. To be meek. To show that brotherly love. To stay away uh, from evil. All of these things. Be serving the Lord. Be pleasing unto the Lord. You know? Doing what you have to do in the sight of the Lord, giving alms, being charitable, you know, teaching the word. Verse 17 again, Ephesians 5, verse 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yeah, if you have to minister unto somebody, that you could minister unto them. Let's go to the book of uh, 1 Peter's, okay? All of this have to do with being always ready, man. So even with this word, you got you got to be ready, man. First Peter's. If somebody asks you a, a a question, you got to be ready to answer that question. Why? Because you're the person who study, right? The scripture say that. Let's get that. And I'll also get that scripture too. If, um, First Peter's, chapter three, and uh, verse fifteen, it says, "But sanctify the Lord power in your hearts, meaning your mind, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason." Of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So you have to be ready. It says, and be ready always. See it? There you go again. Be ready, man. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you. You are a man of the Lord. You should be able to uh, uh, to minister. Teach this, this word. You know, but how are you going to do that? By giving diligence. Okay, let's, 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 let's grab what you, what you got to do. The scripture said to eat this roll. 
eat, eat this roll, okay? Ezekiel uh, 3 and 17 also tell you, um, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the words of my mouth and give them one from me. Okay, so this is 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. This is what you got to do to be always ready to minister unto, uh, unto our people. You know, the Lord sent us out on the highways and the byways, the, the hedges, the chief place of concourse to talk to the children of Israel and to tell the other nations their judgments. Okay, um, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto the Most High. You have to do this. This is a part of the work. This, how, you, how are you going to teach somebody if you don't know? It says, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided, dividing the word of truth. So you got to study to show yourself approved. That's a part of being always ready to give an answer. As we just read 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. That's how you're going to always be ready to give an answer because you, you already studied to show yourself approved unto the Most High. Okay? All right? The, the scriptures tell you that we have an unction. We have an unction from the Lord, roughly paraphrasing. We are anointed with this word, man. You know, everybody read, a lot of people read the scriptures, but the spirit ain't rested upon them. Okay? Another scripture we could go to is, um, what's that? Second Peter's, the first chapter, uh, the 10th verse, because you got to give diligence, man. You know, we got to give diligence. This is um, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. It says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling an election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Okay? So this is the part of, this is a part of um, um, being always ready by giving diligence, man. You have to give diligence. You got to do the work. You got to eat the roll. You got to stay reading. Stay in scripture. Be knowledgeable. You know, the scriptures say to, 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 to be, not, be not ignorant in any matter small or great, man. You know, be not ignorant in any matter small or great. So this is how you're going to, you know, not be ignorant by studying, by learning, reading. Give intendance to, to, to read and the scriptures say to search the scriptures, man. All right. Search the scriptures. This is what you have to do. Okay, what's that? St. John, the 5th chapter, I believe, or the 39th verse. See if I can get that real quick. St. John, the 5th chapter. Yeah, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Okay? Right? Which in the testimony of our Lord is the spirit of prophecy. Okay? The testimony of our Lord is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy. It tells you that in Revelation, the 19th chapter, at the 10th verse. Okay, so I'm going to get one more scripture after that. I'm going to get ready to close out. But you got to always be ready, man, for the return of our Lord. It says, this is the this is the, uh, the angel when he came to uh, John the Revelator. It says, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship the Most High for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy, man. And that's what we have to seek out. We have to seek out the ancient. That's why I was saying you got to give yourself to, 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 to over the diligence, man. When you read Ecclesiasticus, otherwise known as Sirach, the 39th chapter, it tells you that the first verse. It says, but he that giveth his mind. Okay, this is how you... How are you going to have that diligence, man? Okay, the scripture tell you, Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. That wisdom, the scripture tell you, wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 and verse uh, 28. The most I love it none than him who dwells with wisdom. This is how you're going to be ready to teach. Okay? By, by, by giving, doing your due diligence, man. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter 39 and verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom. Okay, you're going to seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Once again, what's the testimony of our Lord? The spirit of prophecy. So the scriptures speak about uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Meaning, say, every chance you get, you're supposed to be into this word. The scripture tells you in 2 Peter chapter 3, all right, it tells you that the earth is going to melt with fervent heat. 
knowing that this is going to happen, what conversation you should be in, in all holy conversation, you should be speaking about these prophecies, man. Being ready always for the return of our Lord, knowing what's going to happen, knowing how to discern good and bad. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you have to be always ready for the return of our Lord, man. And 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 and, and giving yourself over to Scripture and studying and and, and giving due di uh, diligence. That's a part of it, also, man. You got to stay in prophecy and stay on your watch, man. Watching the news and filtering it through the Scriptures. All right. So hey. Once again, man, be always ready for the return of our Lord because you know the scriptures say no man know the hour and our, and our Lord so come out as a thief in the night, man. So, hey, hopefully you are edified. On to the next one. Shalom.